from the Harvard Classics, 1909-1914, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Introductory Note The name Confucius is the Latinized form of the Chinese characters Kong Fu Zi, meaning the Master Kong. The bearer of this name was born of an ancient and distinguished family in the district of Zhou, in the current province of Shandong, China, B.C. 551. His father was a soldier of reputation and governor of Zhou, but not a man of wealth. Confucius married at nineteen, and in his early manhood held a minor office, but within a few years he became a public teacher, and soon attracted numerous disciples. Rising in reputation, he was invited to the court of Zhou, where he investigated the traditional ceremonies and maxims of the ruling dynasty, and in the following year visited another state where he studied the ancient music. When he was nearly fifty, in the year 500 BC, he again took office, becoming in turn chief magistrate of the town of Chung Tu, assistant superintendent of works to the ruler of law, and finally minister of crime. In spite of almost miraculous efficiency, he lost the support of his ruler in 496 BC, and until his death in 478 BC, he wandered from state to state, sometimes well treated, sometimes enduring severe hardships, always saddened by the refusal of the turbulent potentates to be guided by his beneficent counsels. No sooner was he dead, however, than his wisdom was recognized by peasant and emperor alike. Admiration rose to veneration, veneration to worship. Sacrifices were offered to him, temples built in his honor, and a cult established which has lasted almost two thousand years. Confucius did not regard himself as an innovator, but as the conservator of ancient truth and ceremonial propriety. He dealt with neither theology nor metaphysics, but with moral and political conduct. The Lunyu, Analects or sayings of Confucius were probably compiled, says Legg, by the disciples of the disciples of the sage, making free use of the written memorials concerning him which they had received, and the oral statements which they had heard from their several masters. And we shall not be far wrong if we determine its date as about the beginning of the third or the end of the fourth century before Christ. End of the introductory note. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 1. 1. The Master said, In learning and straightway practicing, is there not pleasure also? When friends gather round from afar, do we not rejoice? Whom lack of fame cannot fix, is not he a gentleman? 2. Yu Zhu said, A dutiful son and brother is seldom fond of thwarting those over him. A man unwilling to thwart those over him is never given to crime. A gentleman nurses the roots. When the root has taken, the truth will grow, and what are the roots of love but the duty of son and of brother? 3. The master said, Honeyed words and flattering looks seldom speak of love. 4. Cheng Zhu said, Thrice daily I ask myself, Have I been unfaithful in dealing for others? Have I been untrue to friends? Do I practice what I preach? 5. The Master said, 
to guide the land of a thousand chariots on our business, be true and sparing, love the people and time thy claims upon them. 6. The Master said, The young should be dutiful at home, modest abroad, heedful and true, full of goodwill for the many, close friends with love, and should they have strength to spare, let them spend it upon the arts. 7. Susia said, If a man honor worth and forsake lust, serve father and mother with all his strength, be ready to give his life for the king, and keep faith with his friends, though men may call him rude, I call him learned. 8. The master said, Of a gentleman who is frivolous, non stand in awe, nor can his learning be sound. Make faithfulness and truth thy masters. Have no friends unlike thyself. Be not ashamed to mend thy faults. 9. Cheng Zhu said, Respect death and recall forefathers. The good in men will again grow sturdy. 10. Chu Qin said to Chu Kung, The master, on coming to a country, learns all about the government. Does he ask, or is it told him? Chu Kung said, The master learns it by his warmth and honesty, by politeness, modesty, and yielding. The way that the master asks is unlike other men's asking. 11. The master said, As long as his father lives, a son should study his wishes. After he is dead, he should study his life. If for three years he does not forsake his father's ways, he may be called dutiful. 12. Yu Zhu said, In daily courtesy, ease is of price. This was the beauty of the old king's ways. This they followed in small and great. But knowing this, it is not right to give way to ease unchecked by courtesy. This also is wrong. 13. Yu Zhu said, If promises hug the right, word can be kept. If attentions are bounded by courtesy, shame will be banished. Heroes may be worshipped if we choose them right. 14. The master said, A gentleman who is not a greedy eater, nor a lover of ease at home, who is earnest indeed and careful of speech, who seeks the righteous and profits by them, may be called fond of learning. 15. Tzu Kung said, Poor, but no flatterer, rich, but not proud. How were that? Good, said the master, but better still were poor yet merry, rich yet courteous. Zhu Kung said, Where the poem says, If ye cut, if ye file, if ye polish and grind, is that what is meant? The master said, Now I can talk of poetry to thee, Zhu. Given a clue, thou canst find the way. 16. The master said, not to be known should not grieve you. Grieve that you know not men. End of Book One This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Carl Manchester, 2006 the Sayings of Confucius, from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 2 1. The Master said, In governing cleave to good, as the North Star holds his place, and the multitude of stars revolve upon him. 2. The Master said, To sum up the three hundred songs in a word, they are free from evil thought. 3. The Master said, Guide the people by law, subdue them by punishment. They may shun crime, but will be void of shame. Guide them by example, subdue them by courtesy. They will learn shame, and will come to be good. 4. The Master said, At fifteen I was bent on study. At thirty I could stand. 
At forty, doubts ceased. At fifty, I understood the laws of heaven. At sixty, my ears obeyed me. At seventy, I could do as my heart lusted, and never swerve from right. 5. Meng Yi asked the duty of a son. The master said, Obedience. As Fan Chi, a disciple, was driving him, the master said, Meng Sun asked me the duty of a son. I answered, Obedience. What did ye mean, said Fan Chi, to serve our parents with courtesy whilst they live, said the master, to bury them with all courtesy when they die, and to worship them with all courtesy. 6. Meng Wu asked the duty of a son. The master said, What weighs on your father and mother is concern for your health. 7. Su Yu, a disciple, asked the duty of a son. The master said, Today a man is called dutiful if he keeps his father and mother. But we keep both our dogs and horses, and unless we honour parents, is it not all one? 8. Su Hsia asked the duty of a son. The master said, Our manner is the hard part. For the young to be a stay in toil, and leave the wine and cakes to their elders, is this to fulfil their duty? 9. The master said, If I talk all day to Hui, the master's favourite disciple, Yen Yuan, like a dullard, he never stops me. But when he is gone, if I pry into his life, I find he can do what I say. No, Hui is no dullard. 10. The master said, Look at a man's acts. Watch his motives. Find out what pleases him. Can the man evade you? Can the man evade you? 11. The master said, Who keeps the older kindle and adds new knowledge is fitted to be a teacher. 12. The master said, A gentleman is not a vessel. 13. Su Kung asked, What is a gentleman? The master said, He puts words into deed first, and sorts what he says to the deed. 14. The master said, A gentleman is broad and fair, the vulgar are biased and petty. 15. The master said, Study without thought is vain, thought without study is dangerous. 16. The master said, Work on strange doctrines does harm. 17. The master said, You, the disciple Su Lu, shall I teach thee what is understanding? To know what we know and know what we do not know, that is understanding. 18. Su Chang, a disciple, studied with an eye to pay. The master said, Listen much, keep silent when in doubt, and always take heed of the tongue. Thou wilt make few mistakes. See much, beware of pitfalls, and always give heed to thy walk. Thou wilt have little to rue. If thy words are seldom wrong, thy deeds leave little to rue. Pay will follow. 19. Duke I, Duke of Lu during Confucius' closing years, asked, What should be done to make the people loyal? Confucius answered, Exalt the straight, set aside the crooked, the people will be loyal. Exalt the crooked, set aside the straight, the people will be disloyal. 20. Chi Kang, head of the Chi clan during Confucius' closing years, asked how to make the people lowly, faithful and willing. The master said, behave with dignity, they will be lowly. Be pious and merciful, they will be faithful. Exalt the good, teach the unskillful, they will grow willing. 21. One said to Confucius, Why are ye not in power, sir? The master answered, What does the book say of a good son? An always dutiful son, who is a friend to his brothers, showeth the way to rule. This also is to rule. What need to be in power? 22. The master said, Without truth, I know not how man can live. A cart without a cross pole, a carriage without harness. How could they be moved? 
23. Su Chang asked whether we can know what is to be ten generations hence. The master said, The yin inherited the manners of the hisia. The harm and the good that they wrought them is known. The chu inherited the manners of the yin. The harm and the good that they wrought them is known. And we may know what is to be, even a hundred generations hence, when others follow chu. The yin, the hisia, and the chu were the three dynasties that had ruled China up till the time of Confucius. 24. The master said, to worship the ghosts of strangers is fawning. To see the right and not do it is want of courage. End of Book 2 of The Sayings of Confucius This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius From the Harvard Classics 1909-1914 Edited by Charles W. Eliot Book 3 1. Of the Chi having eight rows of dancers in his hall, Confucius said, If this is to be born, what is not to be born? 2. At the end of the worship, the three clans made use of the Yung hymn. The master said, The dukes and princes assist. Solemn is the son of heaven. What sense has this in the hall of the three clans? 3. The master said, A man without love, what is courtesy to him? A man without love, what is music to him? 4. Lin Fang asked, What is the life of ceremony? The master said, A great question. At high tides, waste is worse than thrift. At burials, grief outweighs nicety. 5. The master said, The wild tribes have kings, whilst the realm of Xia is without. 6. The Qi worshipped on Mount Tai. The master said to Rang Yu, Canst thou not stop this? He answered, I cannot. Alas, said the master, dost thou set Mount Tai below Lin Fang? 7. The master said, A gentleman has no rivalries, except perhaps in archery, and then, as bowing, he joins the winners, or steps down to see the loser drink, throughout the struggle he is still the gentleman. 8. Tzu Xia asked, What is the meaning of Her cunning smiles, her dimples light, Her lovely eyes so clear and bright, The ground not yet with colours dight? The master said, Colouring follows groundwork. Then does courtesy follow after, said Tzu Xia? Shang, said the master, thou hast hit my meaning. Now I can talk of poetry to thee. 9. The master said, I can speak of the manners of Xia, but for Qi witnesses fail. I can speak of the manners of Yin, but for Sung witnesses fail. This is due to their dearth of books and great men. Were there enough of these, they would witness for me. 10. The master said, After the drink offering at the great sacrifice, I have no wish to see more. 11. 
One asked about the words of the great sacrifice. 12. The master said, I do not understand them. Could one understand them, he would overlook the world as I this. And he pointed to his palm. 13. Worship as though those ye worship stood before you. Worship the spirits as though they stood before you. The master said, If I take no part in the sacrifice, it is none to me. 14. Wang Sun Jia said, What is the meaning of, It is better to court the kitchen god than the god of the home? Not at all, said the master. A sin against heaven is past praying for. 15. The master said, Two lines of kings have passed beneath the ken of Jo. How rich in art is Jo. It is Jo I follow. 16. On entering the great temple, the master asked how each thing was done. One said, Who says that the man of Zhou's son has a knowledge of ceremony? On entering the great temple, he asked how each thing is done. On hearing this, the master said, Such is the ceremony. 17. The master said, To pierce through the target does not score in archery, because men differ in strength. This was the old rule. 18. Zhegong wished to do away with the sheep offering at the new moon. The master said, Thou lovest the sheep, Z. I love the right. 19. The master said, Treat the king with all courtesy. Men call it fawning. 20. Duke Ding asked how a king should behave to his ministers, how ministers should serve their king. Confucius answered, A king should behave with courtesy to his ministers. Ministers should serve their king faithfully. 21. The master said, The poem, The Osprey, is glad, but not wanton. It is sad, but not morbid. 22. Duke Ai asked Zai Wo about the shrines of the garden spirits. Zai Wo answered, The Xia emperors grew furs round them. The men of Yin grew cypress, the men of Zhou grew chestnut, meaning, jest not over holy matters. On hearing this, the master said, I do not speak of what is ended, chide what is settled, or find fault with what is past. 23. The master said, how shallow was Guan Zhong? But, said one, was not Guan Zhong thrifty? Guan owned Sang Gui, and in his household none doubled offices, said the master. Was that thrift? At least Guan Zhong was versed in courtesy. The master said, Kings screen their gates with trees. Guan too had trees to screen his gate. When two kings make merry together, they have a stand for the turned-down cups. Guan had a turned-down cup stand too. If Guan was versed in courtesy, who is not versed in courtesy? 24. The master said to the chief musician of Lu, How to play music may be known. At first each part in unison, then a swell of harmony, each part distinct, rolling on to the finish. 25. The warden of Yi asked to see Confucius, saying, 
no gentleman has ever come here whom I have failed to see. The followers presented him. On leaving, he said, My lads, why lament your fall? The world has long been astray. Heaven will make of the master a warning bell. 26. The master said, All beautiful and noble is the music of Shao. The music of Wu is as beautiful, but less noble. 27. The master said, Rank without bounty, Ritual without reverence, Mourning without grief, Why should I cast them a glance? End of Book 3「This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kathy of www.skippopscratch.com. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics. Edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 4. 1. The Master said, Love makes a spot beautiful. Who chooses not to dwell in love? Has he got wisdom? 2. The master said, Loveless men cannot bear need long. They cannot bear fortune long. Loving hearts find peace in love. Clever heads find profit in it. 3. The master said, Love can alone love others, or hate others. 4. The master said, a heart set on love will do no wrong. 5. The Master said, Wealth and honors are what men desire, but abide not in them by help of wrong. Lowliness and want are hated of men, but forsake them not by help of wrong. Shorn of love is a gentleman worthy the name? Not for one moment may a gentleman sin against love, not in flurry and haste, nor yet in utter overthrow. 6. The Master said, A friend to love, a foe to evil, I have yet to meet. A friend to love will set nothing higher. In love's service, a foe to evil will let no evil touch him. Were a man to give himself to love, but for one day, I have seen no one whose strength would fail him. Such men there may be, but I have not seen one. 7. The Master said, a man and his faults are of a piece. By watching his faults, we learn whether love be his. 8. The Master said, To learn the truth at daybreak and die at eve were enough. 9. The Master said, A scholar in search of truth who is ashamed of poor clothes and poor food, it is idle talking to. 10. The Master said, a gentleman has no likes and no dislikes below heaven. He follows right. 11. The master said, Gentlemen cherish worth, the vulgar cherish dirt. Gentlemen trust in justice, the vulgar trust in favor. 12. The master said, The chase of gain is rich in hate. 13. The master said, what is it to sway a kingdom by courteous yielding? Who cannot by courteous yielding sway a kingdom? What can he know of courtesy? 14. The master said, Be not concerned at want of place. Be concerned that thou stand thyself. Sorrow not at being unknown, but seek to be worthy of note. 15. The master said, One thread shen, one runs through all my teaching. Yes, said Sing Tzu. After the master had left, the disciples asked what was meant. Sing Tzu said, The master's teaching all hang on faithfulness and fellow feeling. 16. The master said, A gentleman considers what is right, the vulgar consider what will pay. 17. The master said, At sight of worth, think to grow like it. When evil meets thee, search thine own heart. 18. The Master said, 
A father or mother may be gently chidden. If they will not bend, be the more lowly, but persevere, nor murmur if trouble follow. 19. The Master said, Whilst thou father and mother live, do not wander afar. If thou must travel, hold a set course. 20. The Master said, If for three years a son do not forsake his father's ways, he may be called dutiful. 21. The Master said, A father's and a mother's age must be born in mind, with joy on the one hand, fear on the other. 22. The Master said, Men of old were loath to speak, lest a word that they could not make good should shame them. 23. The Master said, Who contains himself goes seldom wrong. 24. The Master said, A gentleman wishes to be slow to speak and quick to act. 25. The Master said, Good is no hermit, it has ever neighbors. 26. Su Yu said, Preaching to princes brings disgrace, nagging at friends estrangement. End of Book 4. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, Please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kathy of www.skippopscratch.com. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics. Edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 5. 1. Of Kung Ye Cheng, the master said, a girl might marry him. In him was no crime, though he has been in bonds. He gave him his daughter to wife. Of Nan Young, the master said, When right prevails, he will not be neglected. When wrong prevails, he will escape law and punishment. He gave him his brother's daughter to wife. 2. Of Su Tian, the master said, What a gentleman he is! But could he have grown to be a man like this were there no gentleman in Lu? 3. Su Kung asked, And what of me? Thou art a vessel, said the master. What kind of vessel? A rich temple vessel. 4. Young, said one, has love, but he has not a glib tongue. The master said, What is the good of a glib tongue? Fighting men with tongue craft breeds much bitterness. Whether love be his, I do not know, but what is the good of a glib tongue? 5. The master moved Chi Tiao Kai to take office. He answered, For this I lack confidence. The master was pleased. 6. The master said, Truth makes no way. Let me go afloat and scour the sea, and you shall follow me. When Su Lu heard this, he was glad. The master said, Yu is more venturesome than I, but he does not know how to take things. 7. Meng Wu asked whether Tzu Lu had love. The master said, I do not know. He asked again. The master said, A land of a thousand chariots might give you charge of its levies, but whether he have love, I do not know. And how about Chiu? A town of a thousand households, a clan of a hundred chariots, might make Chiu governor, but whether he have love, I do not know. And how about Chi? Girt with his sash, erect in the court, Chi might entertain the guests, but whether he have love, I do not know. 8. The master said to Zhu Kang, Who is abler, thou or Hui? He answered, How dare I aspire to Hui? If he hear one thing, Hui understands ten. When I hear one thing, I understand two. The master said, Thou art not his peer, I grant, thou art not his peer. 9. Tsai Yu slept in the daytime. The master said, Rotten wood cannot be carved, nor are dung walls plastered. Why chide with you? The master said, In my first dealings with men, I hearkened to their words and took their deeds on trust. Now in dealing with men, I hearken to their words and watch their deeds. I righted this on you. 10. The master said, I have met no firm man. 
One answered, Shen Cheng. The master said, Cheng is passionate. How can he be firm? 11. Tzu Kung said, What I do not wish to have done unto me, I likewise wish not to do unto others. The master said, That is still beyond thee, Tzu. 12. Tzu Kung said, We may listen to the master's culture, but on life and on the ways of heaven his words are denied us. 13. Until Tzu Lu could carry out what he heard, he only dreamed to hear more. 14. Tzu Kung asked, Why was Kung Wen styled cultured? The master said, He was quick and fond of learning, not ashamed to ask those beneath him. And that is why he was called cultured. 15. Of Su Chen, the master said, In four ways he was a gentleman. His own life was modest. He honored the man whom he served. He was kind in rearing the people. He was just in his calls upon them. 16. The master said, Yen Ping was versed in friendship. Familiarity breeds courtesy. 17. The master said, Sang Wen lodged his tortoise with hills on the pillars, reeds on the uprights. Was this his good sense? 18. Su Cheng said, Su Wen was thrice made minister without show of gladness, and thrice left office with unmoved face. He was careful to unfold his rule to the new minister. What do you think of him? He was faithful, said the master. But had he love? I do not know, said the master. How should this amount to love? When Tsui slew the king of Qi, Chen Wen forsook ten teams of horses and left the land. On coming to another kingdom, he said, Like my lord Tsui, and left it. On coming to the second kingdom, he said, Like my lord Tsui, and left it. What do you think of him? He was pure, said the master. But had he love? I do not know, said the master. How should this amount to love? 19. Chi Wen thought thrice before acting. On hearing this, the master said, Twice, that is enough. 20. The master said, Whilst peace reigned in the land, Ning Wu showed understanding. When troubles came, he turned simpleton. His understanding is within our reach. Such simplicity is beyond our reach. 21. When he was in Chen, the master said, Home, I must go home. My batch of boys, ambitious and hasty, their minds cultured, their schooling ended, know not what needs fashioning. 22. The master said, As Po Yi and Chu Qi never recalled past wickedness, the foes they made were few. 23. The master said, Who would call Wei Sheng Kao straight? A man begged him for vinegar. He begged it from a neighbor and gave it. 24. The master said, Honeyed words, flattering looks, and overdone humility. So Chi Ming thought shameful, and so do I. To hide ill will and ape friendship, so Chi Ming thought shameful, and so do I. 25. As Yan Yuan and Chi Lu were sitting with him, the master said, Why not each of you tell me his wishes? Tzu Lu said, Carriage and horses I would have, and robes of fine fur to share with my friends, and would wear them out all free from care. Yan Yuan said, To make no boast of talent nor show of merit were my wish. Tzu Lu said, We should like to hear your wishes, sir. The master said, To make the old folk happy, to be true to friends, to have a heart for the young. 26. The master said, It is finished. I have met no one who can see his own faults and arraign for himself within. 27. The master said, In a hamlet of ten households there must be men faithful and true as I. Why is there no one as fond of learning? End of Book 5 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Carl Manchester, 2007. The Sayings of Confucius From the Harvard Classics Book 6 1. The Master said, Young, the disciple, 
Chung Kung might fill the seat of a prince. And might Su Sang Po Su? asked Chung Kung. Yes, said the master, but he is lax. To be lax in his claims on the people might be right, said Chung Kung, were he stern to self, but to be lax to self and lax to others must surely be over lax. The master said, what Jung says is true. 2. Duke I asked which disciples were fond of learning. Confucius answered, Yen Hui, the disciple Yen Yuan, loved learning. His anger fell not astray, he made no mistake twice. By ill luck his life was cut short. Now that he is gone, I hear of no one who is fond of learning. 3. Su Hua, the disciple Kung Si Hua, or Kung Hisi Chi, having been sent to Chi, the disciple Jan asked for grain to give to his mother. The master said, give her a bushel. He asked for more. The master said, give her half a quarter. Jan gave her twenty-five quarters. The master said, On his way to Chi, Chi was drawn by sleek horses clad in fine furs. A gentleman, I have heard, helps the needy. He does not swell riches. When Yuan Su, a disciple, was governor, his pay was nine hundred measures of grain. On his refusing it, the master said, Not so. Why not take it? and give it to thy neighbours and country folk. 4. Of Chung Kung the master said, If the calf of a bridal cow be red and horned, though men be shy to offer him, will the hills and streams disdain him? 5. The master said, For three months together the heart of Huey, the disciple, Yen Yuan, never sinned against love. The others may hold out for a day or a month, but no more. 6. Chi Kang, the head of the Chi clan after the death of Chi Huan, asked whether Chung Yu, the disciple Su Lu, were fit for power. The master said, Yu has character. What would governing be to him? And Su, the disciple Su Kung, is he fit for power? Su is intelligent. What would governing be to him? And Chi Yu, the disciple Jan Yu, is he fit for power? Chi Yu has ability. What would governing be to him? 7. The Chi sent to make Min Su Qin, a disciple, governor of Pi. Min Su Qin said, Make some good excuses for me. If he send again, I must be across the Wen. 8. When Po Niu, a disciple, was ill, the master went to ask after him. Grasping his hand through the window, he said, He is dying. It is our lot. But why this man of such an illness? Why this man of such an illness? 9. The master said, what a man was Hui, the disciple Yan Yuan. A dish of rice, a gourd of water, in a low alleyway. No man can bear such misery. Yet Hui never fell from mirth. What a man he was. 10. Jan Chi Yu, the disciple Jan Yu, said, Pleasure in the master's path I do not lack. I lack strength. The master said, who lacks strength faints by the way. Thou puttest a curb upon thee. 11. The master said to Su Hisia, Read to become a gentleman. Do not read as the vulgar do. 12. When Su Yu was governor of Wu Cheng, a town in Lu, belonging to the Qi, the master said, Hast thou gotten any men? He answered, I have Tan Tai Mei Ming. When walking he will not take a shortcut. 
He has never come to my house except on business. 13. The master said, Menchi Fan never bragged. He was covering the rear in a rout. But when the gate was reached, he whipped up his horse and cried, Not courage kept me behind. My horse won't go. 14. The master said, Unless glib as the reed a toe, and handsome as chow of sung, escape is hard in the times that be. 15. The master said, Who can go out except by the door? Why is it that no one keeps to the way? 16. The master said, Nature outweighing art begets roughness. Art outweighing nature begets pedantry. Art and nature, well blent, make a gentleman. 17. The master said, Man is born upright. If he cease to be so and live, he is lucky to escape. 18. The master said, Who knows does not rank with him who likes, nor he who likes with him who is glad therein. 19. The master said, To men above the common we may speak of things above the common. To men below the common we must not speak of things above the common. 20. Fan Chi, a disciple, asked, What is wisdom? The master said, To foster right amongst the people, to honour the ghosts of the dead, whilst keeping aloof from them, may be called wisdom. He asked, What is love? The master said, To rank the effort above the prize may be called love. 21. The master said, Wisdom delights in water, love delights in hills. Wisdom is stirring, love is quiet. Wisdom enjoys life, love grows old. 22. The master said, By one revolution, Chi might grow as Lu. By one revolution, Lu might win to truth. 23. The master said, A drinking horn that is no horn? What a horn! What a drinking horn! 24. Sai Wo, a disciple, said, Were a man who loves told that there is a man in a well, would he go in after him? The master said, Why should he? A gentleman might be brought to the well, but not entrapped into it. He may be cheated. He is not to be fooled. 25. The master said, by breadth of reading and the ties of courtesy, a gentleman will also keep from error's path. 26. The master saw Nan Su, the dissolute wife of Duke Ling of Wei. Su Lu was displeased. The master took an oath, saying, If there was sin in me, may heaven forsake me, may heaven forsake me. 27. The master said, the highest goodness is to hold fast the golden mean. Amongst the people it has long been rare. 28. Su Kung said, To treat the people with bounty and help the many. How were that? Could it be called love? The master said, What has this to do with love? Would it not be holiness? Both Yao and Shun, two emperors of the golden age, still yearned for this. In seeking a foothold for self, love finds a foothold for others. Seeking light for itself, it enlightens others also. To learn from the near at hand may be called the key to love. End of book six. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics Edited by Charles W. Eliot Book 7 1. The Master said, A teller and not a maker, one who trusts and loves the past. I may be likened to our old pang. 2. The master said, A silent communer, an ever-hungry learner, 
a still unflagging teacher? Am I any of these? Three. The master said, Neglect of what is good in me, want of thoroughness in study, failure to do the right when told me, lack of strength to overcome faults. These are my sorrows. Four. In his free moments, the master was easy and cheerful. Five. The master said, How deep is my decay? It is long since I saw the Duke of Chow in a dream. Six. The master said, Will the right, hold the good one, rest in love, move in art. Seven. The master said, From the men who paid in dried meat upwards, I have withheld teaching from no one. 8. The Master said, Only to those fumbling do I open. Only for those stammering do I find the word. From him who cannot turn the hole when I lift a corner, I desist. 9. When eating beside a mourner, the master never ate his fill. On days when he had been wailing, the master did not sing. 10. The master said to Yan Yuan, I and thou alone can both fill a post when given one and live unseen when passed by. Zhu Lu said, Had ye to command three armies, sir? Who should go with you? No man, said the master, ready to fly a numb at a tiger, or plunge into a river, and die without a pen should be with me. But one, rather, who is weary before a move and gains his end by well laid plans. Eleven. The master said, were shouldering a whip, a sure road to riches, I would turn carter. But since there is no sure road, I tread the path I love. 12. The master gave heed to devotions, war, and sickness. 13. When a master was in Qi for three months after hearing the Shao played, he knew not the taste of meat. I did not suppose, he said, that music could touch such heights. 14. Jen Yu said, Is the master for the king of Wei? I will ask him, said Chu Kong. He went in and said, What kind of men were Po Yi? and Shu Qi. Worthy men of yore, said the master. Did they rule the past? They sought love and found it. What had they to rule? Chu Kong went out and said, The master is not on his side. The master said, Living on coarse rice and water, with bent arm for pillow, Mirth may be ours, but ill-gotten wealth and honours are to me a wandering cloud. 15. The Master said, Given a few more years, making fifty for the study of the year, I may be purged from gross sin. 16. The Master liked to talk of poetry history and the upkeep of courtesy. Of all these, he was fond of talking. 17. The Duke of She asked Chu Lu about Confucius. Chu Lu did not answer. The master said, Why couldst thou not say 
He is a man so eager that he forgets to eat, whose cares are lost in triumph, unmindful of approaching age. Eighteen, the master said, "I was not born to understanding. I loved the past, and questioned it earnestly." Nineteen, the master never spake of ghosts or strength, crime or spirits. Twenty, the master said, "Walking free together." I'm sure of teachers. I pick out the good and follow it. I see the bad and shun it. Twenty-one. The master said, "Heaven planted worth in me. What harm can come of Huan Tui?" Twenty-two. The master said, "My boys, do you think that I hide things from you?" I hide nothing. One who keeps from his boys naught that he does, such as chill. Twenty-three. The four things the master taught were culture, conduct, faithfulness, and truth. Twenty-four. The master said, "A holy man I shall not live to see." Enough could I find a gentleman, a good man I should.